Hi. Hi, Dr. Perry. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? Oh, amazing. Amazing. It's a pleasure yeah, to have you over. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Speaking from California, near Hollywood to Portugal. Okay. Yes, definitely. And I've chosen some background that goes along with your location. So there you go. We should, yeah, we should looks, be fine with it. Looks, it looks like LA. <laughs> yeah, it looks like LA. It, it, it's a, mm -hmm. a picture of LA. So we should be fine. With yeah. It. Mm -hmm. I recognize the palm trees and the city hall. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and the freeways. <laughs> in the freeways. Well, not that much traffic anyway on this picture, but again. Uh, yeah. Uh, tell me, uh, how, where did my, Dr. Michael Perry came from? What's his story? How did he get here? Well, that's, that's quite the story. I mean, the, I think the interesting thing a lot of people are very curious about is I studied for the Catholic priesthood for 11 years. And that was quite the journey. As a matter of fact, I even have a general, a genuine picture of myself while I was in the seminary. I don't know whether I can show you or not. No, with the, with the Chrome, it doesn't work, but it's okay. okay. Yeah, you're I right. Okay. Anyway, I had a picture of myself with my little priestly outfit and so forth, smiling face. I was much cuter then, but still, the it was of interest. And so anyway, I was studying for the Catholic priesthood for 11 years. Mm -hmm. And I got out of that because it was an authority issue. It's not even though I'm naturally interested in sex and I've always been interested in sex. It wasn't for a sexual reason. It was because I couldn't stand the incredible authoritarian uh, attitude that I was being forced to live under. So about two months before my final vows, I wrote a letter to my superiors and my parents and everybody I knew in the world telling them why I was leaving, which was an, it's an authority issue. I just didn't want to continue to live like that. So then I got out, got into psychology, discovered you could specialize in sex therapy within psychology. And then I discovered, if you will, since I've always been a, a visual kind of guy, and I, even when I was teaching, I would always try to bring visuals, movies and whatnot into my teaching. I started making adult instructional videos. That was back so in the, I don't know, middle, mid eighties. I'm sorry, what if? It was uh, about mid eighties, early eighties. Uh, the, oh, my video, when my videos were being made? When you left the, the priesthood and uh, began uh, psychology and teaching and did the, 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 the sex therapy. Uh, right, I got, I brought in, I, you know, I moved into sex therapy, yes, in mid 80s and then late 80s, early 90s is when I began to uh, uh, pursue actually making instructional erotica. Okay. And I've been doing that. I have... I've got about uh, 60 titles to my name, either things that, <clears throat> that I actually produced myself or maybe I wrote or directed for other people. And you know, on, they're, on. They're, they're, really made, they're really made to, uh, to facilitate other people to have better sex lives. I think we can always learn something more interesting, something that uh, maybe make our sex life and our partner's sex life better. So that's what I did. I produced these videos. Interesting enough, here's a little bit of a sideline. I was doing this and my parents were still alive. My mother was still alive and she quite approved of me doing it. She still felt that I had a, I had a calling. I had a vocation. Now my vocation is to facilitate people's sex lives. So she still thought it was something really quite appropriate and not, and not so different than what I was doing. Because when I was, when I was in the seminary, I was counseling people. When I got into psychology, I was counseling people. When I got into producing uh, adult films, I was still counseling people. So I felt like, you know, it, it, felt, it felt like it moved along pretty well with it, you know, within that, those parameters. All the approach that we've got on Smartify and what we try to, to pass on as a, a general message is sex is a very, 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 um, normal thing it's on every day's people's lives so there's nothing to be embarrassed or ashamed about it's quite sex positive it the, the message goes that uh, you, you should not be judged or blamed for it uh, for instance the three rules on smodify is that it has to be legal it has to be consented of course mm -hmm. and the third one is mm -hmm. no hatred no judgment no racism no sexism so anything that goes against those rules it's not allowed so sure 
everything else is allowed, meaning sex is a positive thing. And when you cancel couples, men, women, doesn't matter, um, you're actually doing a very, very good um, job for uh, the community as a whole, because you, people, people that have better sex lives are happier, live better lives. That's my experience. That's my general knowledge. But you as an expert might have a different one. Well, I agree with you 100%. I mean, every, you're preaching to the choir here. I, I completely am in concurrence with everything you said. However, we, we live, and I think maybe I'm not so sure how it might be in, in Lisbon, but uh, we here in the U.S., I think, have a rather sex-negative attitude about so much and so many of the things that we uh, have to struggle with as sex-positive people is the sex negative attitudes that come especially from religion and i believe i'm somewhat uniquely qualified to be able to speak about that since i've been on both sides of it of i've been able to i've been able to tell people and even people who want to quote the bible to me i've been on quite a lot of radio and television shows and so forth and and very often people uh you know they they have these real sex negative attitudes and i and sometimes they'll even quote the bible at me and i can quote it right back at them of course, of course, quite, 11 years, a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just a weekend deal. You know, I think I gave it a good shot. <laughs> of course. And um, there, I actually have a uh, Catholic education. Uh, I was in Catholic church, you know, a nun church uh, mm -hmm. since I was two and a half, three years old until I was 11. Mm -hmm. So I went to mass yeah. every morning at eight o'clock in the morning. So, you know, the kind sure, of school. So. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I quite relate to what you're saying, and I honestly love one specific, not, not quoting the Bible, not talking about that, but there's, I, I guess there's a porn movie inside the Bible, when they tell the story of the, um, how do you say it in English? It's, um, in Portuguese, it's like the, sh the, the chant of the chants, I don't know the, the, the name in, in English. Oh, the hymn of the hymn of hymns or the song of songs. Of course. Yeah. And is that is that the one you're speaking of? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's quite, yeah, yeah. That is quite erotic. I mean, oh, there's all is. kinds of very you know heavy duty sexual things going on in there. Definitely. There's that's a that's, that's, a, uh, that's a that's a whole porn movie right there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the Bible, it's yeah. I, I trust yeah. I, I trust the Bible as a, um, well. Actually, the Old Testament, the new one doesn't. Uh, it's no good. Uh, but the Old <laughs> Testament it, it is actually a, a very, very interesting story storytelling book. It's 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 how they interpreted things back then, and it quite relates to the society that they had. And mm -hmm. um, I honestly believe it portrays what humankind was like uh, five, six, seven, eight thousand years ago. So, That's right. And and what you said there is so very true when you when you say that it, it's it's a book of stories. Of course. It really is a book of stories, and they're and they're sometimes we call them parables or allegories or something like that. And very often they don't need to be interpreted literally. I mean, they can't be interpreted literally, but they have they have a kernel of truth about them. There's supposed to be some sort of message in there, which which needs to be interpreted, you know, rather than just slavishly believing it, you know, word for word, and you know, having every word being the word of God. Oh, definitely not. That's not the word of God. That's actually the word of man and sure. what they did and what they built and how they came to be uh, before uh, an institution uh, changed the sense of it. And if you, if you look at it in an historical perspective, you've got those stories on Judaism, on Buddhism, on Hinduism, on Catholic religion, on some of it was even inherited because of historical factors by the Islam. So yeah, actually yeah. that's the foundation of modern society. And I'm not talking East or West, I'm just talking people. Mm -hmm. And that's right. So, yeah. it, 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 and when you look at it and you go and you study ancient civilizations, you go to the Egyptians, to, to, to the Hindus, to the Sumerians, sex was everywhere. Yes, it was yes. actually everywhere. There's written dialogues regarding in ancient Egyptian uh, hieroglyphs. There's an explanation how to shave the pubic hairs. 
with the 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 the, 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 the wax from honey from money bees and uh, something oh, that well, that's the, inter, that's a new one on me. I did not hear that. That's, that's amazing. That's actually yeah, yeah. very very descriptive, uh, and they they <laughs> they they actually teach uh, women how to shave their pubic hairs with, huh. with bee wax. So uh -huh. <clears throat> it's not like uh, you know, sex was invented in the sixties or seventies by the by the you know, yeah, it's been going yeah. around forever. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> so just. Be act, be grown up about it. Uh, well, the Catholic Church did break it for some some centuries, but I guess that's mainly because they didn't know what they're doing. Sure. Well, also it wasn't just they didn't know what they're doing. They used it as a fear factor to control people. True. You see, there 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 isn't a religion in the world. There is not a you know you name it from from Hinduism to, to uh, the Muslim tradition, to the Judeo-Christian tradition and so forth. Every single religion knows that one of the ways you control people is to control their sexuality. And I like to say, if you've got them by the balls, their hearts and minds will follow. Definitely, I agree. And that's absolutely true. I mean, there isn't, you know, every single religion has something to say about sex. They have something to say about marriage something to say about who you can marry, when you can have sex, when you, you know, it, it, there's, there's regulations, even in some of the loosest religions of the world that have very little to say about anything. They all have at least something to say about how we get together sexually. Sure. Now let's fast forward some couple of thousand of years and uh, let's get back to the late eighties, beginning of the nineties uh, and today we're talking about 30 years difference. Um, you that have been working on this for quite some time, do you find uh, major differences between what men and women wanted back in the 90s and what they want now, what they do now? Is that difference so different or communication changed and it's the same thing? I think a major difference is the way women see their sexuality. And, and therefore they are becoming more assertive about it. They're really being more expressive about what they really want. And for some men, that's a, that's a major, major consternation is caused by that. <laughs> they thought they were in charge. They thought that they knew what to do and whatever. And then some woman goes, excuse me, wait a minute, don't do that, do this. And, and it, it unfortunately does flabbergast certain men therefore flabberg you know cause trouble in the couples in environment and the way they relate to each other and so forth but i think that that uh, it isn't just the last 30 years it's the last many many years i think men and women have basically certain needs and certain desires and they they may express it differently or sometimes in the past they didn't express it at all but i think the the needs and the desires if you really drill down on what people really wanted and so forth as you said going back you know 8000 years and what the sumerians might have wanted they they you know they they want things that are really quite similar and nowadays i think the biggest change is is what women want and 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 how they can go about getting it As a matter of fact that's one of the two two of my videos is what women want and what women really want <laughs> of course of and course. and it, it's and 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 often and, and let me say sometimes even men that are so supposedly you know enlightened and so forth they ask a woman so what do you want and so often they get the response well i don't know just try something and i don't know about you but that is incredibly frustrating <clears throat> that is not a good answer a little bit like saying, so where do you want to go to dinner tonight? Or so when they go, oh, I don't know, what do you want to do? That's not helpful. And so therefore, oftentimes women need to be able to figure out how to have a vocabulary about sex and be, and be uh, brave enough to be able to use that vocabulary and get what they want because they're actually being explicit and clear about what they really want. So I think that is a, I think a major change and therefore men have to change because of that. And of course, for some men, it's very frustrating. They, they don't know how to deal with that. And they'll even act out 
They will even do things, you know, I certainly wouldn't say that's the core of why there is certain violence between men and women, but in some cases it really is because men are so incredibly frustrated and, they, and they're, they're not getting their needs met because they don't know what their partner wants or they don't even have a partner. There's, there's, a, there's a, I don't know whether you're aware of it uh, there, but there, there's a sort of a burgeoning group now called incels, people who are involuntary celibate. And these men, you know, are bitter about the fact that, that they're not, they don't have a partner. They don't know how to get one, but they're mad about it. And they're angry at women. They, they blame women for the fact that they don't have sex. They don't have partners. And I'm I, telling I you, I, the, the, I, I heard about them. And uh, I honestly think that's a upbringing problem uh, regarding education and uh, um, the, 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 the social background that they have. I'm not talking about being rich or poor or being in the good neighborhood or a bad neighborhood. I, I, I'm talking about socializing and being reasonable. Uh, I don't want to use another word. Um, sometimes, well, not sometimes, kids are, are awful to one another. And yeah. there are people yeah. that fight back and know how to respond to that and have this, the, the family support or the friends support to get over it. And Yes. Some don't. And sometimes that's a mind troubling situation that goes along all their lives. So yeah. I get it, but I think those people should get help. And uh, when, they're, when they're growing up, we've got all generation growing up right now. We have to be supported and we have to be to have an, uh, an eye out on them regarding social exclusion and uh, difficulties to relate and to, 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 to engage with, with the next one. Well, now we're living in the COVID situation, I guess everywhere in the world. And uh, I, I feel that the kids are missing out more than missing school or the lessons or the teachers. I, I think that they're missing on their social patterns and social behaviors. That's yeah, you're opinion. right. It's, you're absolutely true. I think, and especially now, kids don't even get to go to school anymore and so forth. It's definitely even more rampant now. But it was, it happened last year too, before COVID. Yes. You know, that the, there are so many of these guys that, that uh, you know, they have an attitude and, and they're angry about it and they don't know what to do with it. And oftentimes what they, they know to do about it is to strike out at women and blame women. And, you know, it's, it's hard to figure, you know, if you're, if you're, if you wish you really want to be with a woman, you really think, you know, being mad at them, wanting to do nasty things to them, do you really think that's going to get you a partner? I don't think that's a very no, good way of going no, about no. it, but, but, you know, I'm saying that like they, that, they but... do it. That's what they, you know, that's what's going on. <clears throat> well, that's a tough one. That's a, a yeah. difficult situation. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, you know, you've heard about the so-called 40 year old virgin, you'd be surprised of how many men and women are out there who a are lot. 40 year old virgins, They're not you know, that, 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 uh, you know, I don't know what the statistics are for sure here in America, but it's, it is going up. I heard a shocking statistic in Japan right now, 40% of men in Japan are virgins. That is mind boggling, it mind boggling. Is. It so, is. you know, so then what do these guys do? You know, they're, they're again, of course, that's another reason why Regarding the population culture, is, is, is disintegrating in, in, uh, in Japan. Yes. You know, they're Regarding losing culture, population. They, they are quite different uh, from us. Let's say the, the, the upbringings of, of the, the European uh, movement, let's say like yeah. this, because yeah. Well, yeah. The North America and South America are quite related to the European due yeah, to... Right, right, uh, right. <clears throat> where we came from, yeah, <laughs> mainly. Basically, yes. So <laughs> we, we're not that culturally apart. They are. Yeah. Japanese yes. are yes. quite apart. So... Yeah. Um, but whatever it is, but let's say that, again, I have no, I don't know what the real statistic is, but let's say that 20 or 30% of, of men in, in the U.S. are virgins. 
and and you know that's an issue it, it's a it's a problem for them it's a problem for society definitely because yes. then society has to act differently because of these people and what are you going to do about them you know and i again would would hesitate to make a link total linked towards you know some of the screwballs that that attacked our our us capital 2 weeks ago but but there are some of those kind of people that are just plain angry and and they need to they form a club they form a group and they want to lash out they want to they want to they create an enemy and and they and they want to kill the enemy True. I get it. I get it. Um, tell me one thing. Uh, quite interestingly, do you think masturbation is a problem there? Meaning with these people, or yes. Well, I, I, I mean, um, being being a, a virgin, for, well, forever for that that long. Um, do they rely on masturbation? Do they just uh, ignore the opposite sex? Do they not feel attracted to to women or to men? Or what do you think that the main motivation to to stay like that, to not act out on the positive sense? What their main motivation is? Well, let me let me divide that that question up a little bit more with a Please more do. nuanced answer. The what I want to get into is using, you know, utilizing a sexual surrogate. That's a substitute partner to be able to overcome your difficulties. And I have uh, had clients <clears throat> that come to me who definitely are virgins or they're almost virgins, and they they really need to have a the the, the, the a surrogate to facilitate them being able to to do what they do. I have I must admit I have never been. I have never had a client whom I would really call one of these angry incel types. So I really, I, I hesitate to get into their heads completely. I don't really know exactly what's going on with them. But some of these other guys that, that let's say they're a 40 year old virgin, there are a variety of reasons why that's so. Oftentimes it's timidity. They, they're, they're just afraid to make the, the advance towards a woman and and maybe they have tried a couple of times and they've been rebuffed maybe even in a nasty way uh by a woman or you know, like you said you know kids can be nasty and sometimes you know this may have begun when they were teenagers you know this poor guy you know who wasn't very popular but he tried really hard to to get a girlfriend and she just laughed at him and said I, you know you're disgusting you know i don't want to be with you and all this other stuff and maybe that was the 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 harbinger of 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 his 40 year old virginity and the fact that he just couldn't get past the fact that, that women are scary. They're awful. They're, they, you know, and how could you be with one, even though I'd love to be with one, I don't know how to do it because they're dangerous. You know, the, the, so, you know, I don't know when it was, you know, in the middle ages or something like that, they had this, they had this, this saying that, that, I mean, to translate it from the Latin immediately is that, you know, women have teeth in their vaginas. Yes, you know this vagina, <laughs> the, the vagina dentata, you know, and you know it's dangerous, and you don't, you know, you wouldn't want to stick anything in there. So, <laughs> of course, gonna, of course, of you're, course, you're gonna. So, so with those people, that I mean, the people that come to me, they're definitely motivated and moved, and they really want to get taken care of. And I do sometimes that would be a re a very good reason to refer that person to a sexual surrogate. That's an expert who really knows how to take this person, not just to get them to have sex, but especially in their case, to get them to learn how to be relaxed with women, learn how to talk to women, learn how to touch women. It isn't just, you know, tab A goes and slot B. They know that, but you know, that it, it's, it's not that they're ignorant. It's not that they, but, but they're, but they're afraid. It's the fear that has them stuck like that. And I, and I've even dealt with a couple of women in the same situation. You know, they're, they, they want to put their careers first or they, you know, for some reason, you know, they, they just feel like, you know, they haven't found Mr. Right or this guy hasn't found Mrs. Right. And, and therefore they, they limit themselves and then, you know, they just price themselves right out of the market sometimes. I mean, some of these people, you know, figured that, you know, if I'm not with, you know, I don't know what, Selma Hayek or Marilyn Monroe or somebody, you know, then, then all these other women are just no damn good. So they have such incredibly high uh, expectations about what women are supposed to look like and what women are supposed to be able to do 
that, that they just price themselves right out of the market for that. So those people, the people that are sincere, <laughs> they've come to, to therapy to overcome that. They have these specific fears and whatnot. We've been able to you know, overcome it. And most of them, matter of fact, I don't think I've really ever had a client who's truly, let's just take a male, who's truly angry at women, who truly, you know, is just really angry at women. You know, they'd like to act out. Maybe they, you know, their fantasies of or killing a woman or something like that. I've never had a case like that. And that would have to be treated differently than just somebody who is shy and, and, and needs to learn some social skills besides some sexual skills. So I really don't know what to do with it. A true uh, die in the world incel, uh, I don't know. But but of course, if he came to me, <laughs> you know that you, would mean you had to figure it out. Of course, trying. Yeah, he would try to do it. But it's, if I if I ran into somebody on the street <laughs> and they found out I'm a sex therapist, said, "All right, fix me, damn it." Here, you know, it's, <laughs> I'll I'll let you know. I'll call you next week of when course. when that happens. I'll give you my theory about what's going on in that guy's head. Uh, you, you touched a subject there that uh, I, I, I meant to ask you. Um, <clears throat> for the last 30 years that you've been doing this, uh, did fantasies change for men and for women, or did they stay the same? You know, the, the, you know, the general fantasies that yeah. they have, the yeah. fetishes, the taboos, did, do they, did they keep the same or did they evolve? I think maybe some of them are a little more explicit. Some of them might be a little more extreme, but I believe that that uh, you know fantasies perhaps you know are relatively the same. I mean, just speaking personally, I know that that my favorite fantasies, you know, they haven't changed in 50 years. You know, I, I enjoy a certain type of fantasy, a certain scenario, and so forth, and that's what I like, and that's what works. That's what turns me on, and and therefore I'm guessing that people probably have pretty much set fantasies but however if they had no particular fantasies and then they grew up on porn as some of the more extreme porn out there maybe their fantasies are a little more extreme a little more out there a little more dangerous that's certainly possible so you think well that, that, that's the thing um i guess back in the 80s early 90s spice well i'm going to use the same example as before uh, spicing things up between a couple probably would be uh, shaving the pubic hair or putting some nice some nice laundry or something like that that would spice things up nowadays yeah. to spice things up you have to bring in leather and whips and uh, heavy machinery and uh, a lot of sex toys. So it, it, things just got a little out of hand. Mm -hmm. I really like that stuff, to be honest. So uh, that's a PSA. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. I, I think um, porn and communication and, and the internet quite changed the, the way that people look at sex. And um, not only the younger ones, I guess it goes all the way to the third age, to 70, 80 years old. Um, so I think spicing things, things up right now, it's a completely different ballgame. What do you think? I don't think it's completely different. I still think you have your basic things and there are certain, there, there are certain uh, things that, that, that just didn't exist, you know, 40 years ago or 30 years ago, but which, which are now in the marketplace. I mean, you can go online, you can find all kinds of things. As a matter of fact, I just, I like to kind of keep my, my hand on, on, you know, what is going on. So I went to a, a hustler of Hollywood uh, store right here in my town of Bakersfield, which is a very conservative uh, town. And I'm sure 80% of the people here voted for Trump the 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 um actually it's not true you know that he barely he definitely won but I, that's another story well let's don't get me into that the the but anyway there's a hustler of hollywood's store here and the the dvd racks are getting much smaller and the lingerie racks and the and the sex toy racks are getting bigger and there are certainly, you know, I mean, let's face it, how many, how many different kinds of dildos can you have? So just, just as a wholesale 
issue. You know, you have to have some, some things that are a little bit different. So there may be a, a little bit more of the, the whips and chains genre. They're still oftentimes just fur lined cuffs as opposed to, you know, cuffs that have spikes in them. True, true. <laughs> but, but, but uh, you know, they of course have to, you know, allow a little bit more interest in, in what people might want to buy. And I was even out of the corner of my eye watching these other people, you know, in the store, you know, to seeing what, what they like, what, what they're talking about. And these were couples in there, you know, and the guy would hold up something and says, what do you think? And she, and it was very interesting that the, the, in this, this particular couple, uh, they, they were quite open about talking about it you know, about what, you know, and he, she goes, no, I don't think I will. Well, how about that one over there? That, that looks like fun or whatever. And, and therefore they were in there to, to, uh, you know, find some things to spice up their sex life. And maybe 40 or 50 years ago, there really wasn't anything to spice up your sex life. I mean, you could, you could do some things. And of course the swing community was out there, the, the, you know, the certain, you know, organizations that were kind of on the fringe and whatnot the the gay community was was becoming a little more prominent and so forth but but you didn't have that many machines you didn't have that many toys that were on the common market you did have the vibrator the vibrator has been around for more than a hundred years and interestingly enough uh, one of the major electric vibrators nowadays was actually developed by a doctor and this is this is amazing these women would come to his office and and they hysteria. Had a, yeah they had a case of hysteria yes know? so hysteria you know means a wandering <laughs> uterus and 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 these women would go and these doctors would actually masturbate them to get them to have an orgasm and they went home happy but this poor doctor that developed this thing he was just getting darn tired of this so he, true. that's true he, he invented a vibrator <laughs> that, that was the, the, just to make, just middle, to make middle, life easy yes middle 1800s i guess in yeah. england yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah i've heard of that of it's, that yeah and um well, just uh, a quick side note on that. Uh, well, I like sex. I like uh, a lot of things about sex. And I visit from time to time sex stores and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in Europe, um, I'm about to say that for the last five to eight years, you will have a hard time trying to find a DVD on a sex store. Yeah. There are, there are none, almost none. Uh, it's yeah, no, a, a, DV, a DVD about sex toys or DVDs, period. No, no, DVDs, movies. Uh, well, yeah, the, that's right. Yeah, see, and I've got, I have, I have a, I have a garage full of DVDs. Just let me know, and I'll send you a, I'll send you a boatload of them. A friend, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, you know, a couple of years ago, he said, you know, DVDs are for people that are too stupid to get it for free on the internet. You know, you can get all of my well, Actually, I, th I think there are even more people. Well, there's a lot of sex going on. There's a lot of porn on the internet. But uh, from day to day, there's a lot more people willing to pay for it. Uh, not paying for sex, but paying for decent quality uh, engagement. And when you look at the current, current reality of um, sex workers, for instance, when you go on campsites like, you know, Shatterbait, My Free Cam, whatever, uh, you, you you actually see that people are there, well, eventually to, to masturbate and to, 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 to see women do stuff or do see men do stuff, doesn't matter. But if you spend long enough there, you'll see that with a, a naked woman in front of you, it's a chat room and people just stay there and they pay to have a talk. To, to have a conversation, yeah. to, to engage. And I yeah. think that the, that movement, well, that's also paying for porn. That movement has brought in, and the confinement helped a lot in that sense, for OnlyFans, for instance, <clears throat> the, the confinement helped a lot to bring a lot of money into the industry. And people are willing to pay for it, not only yeah. to, to go yeah. on porn or uh, any other porn to, uh, to see the, mov the movies or the scenes or their fetishes uh, for free, but they're willing to pay f someone on the first person's base, on the first name base 
to have uh, a, a genuine engagement, not the physical one, but to act out on someone. Mm -hmm. So no, I, I, I very much agree. And, and let's, and even to get back on a, a question you asked earlier, which I don't think I really even answered, you asked, do, do you think masturbation has changed? Or do these people that that are, you know, virgins and whatever, do they do they literally live their sex lives via masturbation? And I think there's a tremendous amount of, of these guys that do that. And therefore, maybe they truth truly feel that they're at least getting some kind of sex relief by masturbating. But just to keep right back into what you just said now, so many people are willing to pay to have some kind of interaction, even though it's not a real interaction, whatever that means, you know, you get to be together with some girl in a campsite and maybe you're there all by yourself or you're there with other guys and everybody's commenting and you know, you know how they go that, that you can, you're, you're still actually somehow interacting with a real life person. You ask her a question or you tell her to do this or, or whatever, and, and you pay her and the better she's doing, the more you're supposed to pay her and, and all that kind of thing. You're definitely paying. And, and I'm guessing though, that there are even a fair amount of people that might not actually be masturbating while that little episode is going on, but they're watching her. They might be even getting mildly aroused, but they're not actively masturbating. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people do, but I'm sure a lot of people kind of felt like, you know, they had a sexual experience with this girl and they didn't orgasm but it was sexy and and that that fulfilled that basic need for connection and sex i guess that's which a different might not way of even flirting. include that's what a different way of flirting yeah in a, in a sense i mean it's pretty obvious you know if you read the comments you know that that these guys are putting out there i don't think a man would get much get very many partners by doing is saying what these guys say you know but but they're but they're out there whatever that distorts the reality and that brings well back bring us back to the social problems that we've talked before uh because people get uh, they, they lose touch with with reality with what's on the other side and uh, you know being in front of a keyboard or having someone close to your face is not the same thing like face to face and say things and when you're behind the keyboard you just feel like almighty and powerful and you just write all yeah, you can say the anything yeah. that you want yeah so yeah on that sense i think it it, it, it makes society a little harder to deal with. It makes society harder for that individual to deal with. Yes. I mean, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And in a sense, their, their little world, their society is, is the keyboard or, you know, watching some girl, you know, masturbate with a vibrator. And that's, that's their reality. True. As opposed to, you know, going out and, and, you know, saying, hi, you know, how are you doing? You know, you know, would you like to have coffee or, or something like that? I have, I have a word for it. Well, actually it's an English word that I really, well, we don't speak English on the streets here, but uh, in a group of friends, um, when we went out, I just used that word and everybody knew what was about to happen. The word is mingle. 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 Uh -huh. When yeah. I start, the, me and a couple of friends, we, when we started, let's mingle, just saying this, that uh -huh. meant that we would go out and would meet uh, an enormous amount of people. It, right. It, there, there was nothing sexual about it. Just mingling. Really? Really? Well, like, it could, it, well, let's put it this way. Maybe it could lead to something sexual. Of course, never did. Actually, yeah, yeah, it never yeah. did because oh, never when did. we were oh, out okay. to mingle, we just yeah. went to bars and discos and we met someone and say, hey, how are you? What's your name? I'm Mike, I do this, mm -hmm. I do that, and you. Uh -huh. It's like networking, but we did this as uh, on a regular basis and it was fun as well. We've met it, lots and lots and lots of people and yeah. uh, it was amazing. 
And but did, did you meet anybody that you really like did get their name and address and phone number? And I actually did, I, but never follow through. Never, that was not the point. Right. Oh, that's huh. That's interesting. That's not the point. Um, hmm. OK, when I was younger and uh, now I'm married with kids and uh, I chose what I had. So I'm it's not it's not okay a, so yeah so you're not you're right so you're not i'm really not out. i'm not looking, you're mingling I'm not you're mingling there. is not to get a partner no definitely not yeah your mingling is just to mingle it to mingle and when i was younger and didn't have a girlfriend or i did have a girlfriend but i still did the same thing i mingled i connected to people i still have friends that i've met this way uh -huh. men and women and it was just fun it is fun you mm -hmm. like to have friends. Well, I love to have friends and to, to, to go out to, to have lunch with them or dinner or drinks and bring them over. And that's OK. That, it's, it, it's not everything about sex. Not everything is about getting laid. It just, you, you just go out, have, well, not a couple, like eight or ten drinks, and you get pretty much not <laughs> completely wasted, but you're definitely happy. And you yeah, start mingling. You're loose. You're looser, yeah. You start mingling and it's so much fun mm -hmm. and yeah. the word that i that we use on that group it it is mingle we just say let's mingle and everyone knows Everybody what understands. they're doing yeah mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. it's it's a party it's you go to three four five six bars at the end of the night you say i met like 15 people 20 people and mm -hmm. you say their names and what they do and it, it's amazing and it's uh -huh. a nice a very nice way to socialize without um you know you know without prejudice without confusions without uh second intentions or no i'm gonna get laid i'm gonna get some pussy tonight it's well mm -hmm. there were nights like that but it doesn't have to be like that yeah yeah well, that's the main the main concept behind networking when you talk business so uh, actually, yeah sure it's not not that much. It's not that that big. It's just a way of doing things differently, and it's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Trust mm -hmm. me, you'll still. Yeah. I think you should do it sometime. Anyway. Yeah. There. Well, it reminds me of a story that that um, that after I got out of the seminary and I and I had you know, by that time I was so I get well. Let's put it this way. It must have been ten years after I got out of the seminary because I was you know I was already doing sex therapy. So I came, I wasn't living here in, in my town of Bakersfield. And I, I, um, my brother who at that time, I think he was divorced at that time or had never married. I can't remember what it, anyway, he was not married at the time. I was not married at the time. He says, let's go out to a bar and Bakersfield being kind of a country area, you know, there's lots of country Western bars. So we went into this bar and my brother like knows everybody and I didn't know anybody and I'm a little shy. And uh, so anyway, he says, see those girls over there. I know them, that's whatever. So we went over there and, you know, and sat down with them, had a drink and this and that. And then we were, and then we would get up and dance, you know, with different girls and so forth. And, you know, the usual question comes up is, so what do you do? You know, that's like universal. And, and I basically said, I'm a sex therapist. And the girl kind of goes, oh, okay, fine. And, you know, so anyway, like a half an hour later, when we're still talking about things, and maybe I am relating a little bit more about sex therapy, she looks at me and goes, you really are a sex therapist, aren't you? This is not just a line. <laughs> no, but that's a good line. I never yes. used that one. Uh, it's a shame I should have used it in the past. That's a very, very good one. Yeah. I never thought of it. Yeah, but it happened to be true. See, I wasn't putting it on, but she thought I was. She thought this is just a well, line. It's of course there's not. Well, that's it's not the thing that you see every day. You know, right? You, Absolutely. You, you can you, well, you can see a dentist or a, a yeah. nurse or something, but a sex therapist is not that a usual. little le a little less common. A little and less again, common. And even if it was, even if it was more common it would still be just be a great pickup line you know i'm a sex oh, yes. therapist you know so you would say that even though you're not one <laughs> and that's what she thought i was doing um uh, tell me one thing uh what are your plans for you know 2021 um where do you see the the the, the community the, the you know couples moving on um what are your plans what are what are they doing how do that relate 
what what is what is the sex community doing or what yes. are my well, plans so, what? The, the, your plans i guess there's always going to be um, sex therapy is always going to be needed okay it's not something yeah. that uh, is going to fade away in one week or one year so right. my question is are you still um working on it are you your plans what are your plans for the future how do you deal with it yeah right professionally as far as as far as sex therapy is concerned or just therapy in general but really sex therapy is that that i kind of consider myself semi-retired now so i'm not really actively seeking new clients but if someone came along and wanted my services i mean i actually do get some people over the internet that that sound interested in this and that happens and sometimes they may turn into a, a client for a brief time or whatever and that's fine i certainly don't discourage them you know i'm interested in it but but uh speaking in that way professionally i'm i'm less enthusiastic about working hard you know i don't put advertisements in in uh you know online or anything like that i really don't do that but so what i'm more active doing more actively doing now in almost in a professional way is besides being a therapist i'm also a professional photographer so I, I I like to go and and do these expeditions, and I'm sure you've heard of Yosemite National Park. You know, it's a big, I did, and park. I've seen your pictures, some of them at least, yeah. and you do amazing stuff. Thanks. Yeah, and it it uh, and in in uh, next Monday, <clears throat> next Sunday rather, I'm going to uh, to go to Yosemite. To it should be. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. It's going to be snowy. It's going to be colder than hell, and whatever. It's in the mountains. And uh, I, I really, you never know. <clears throat> it's a little bit like the famous photographer Ansel Adams said, you know, you know, you, you, uh, you just have to be there. And, and sometimes you could go somewhere and you could, you know, you could go there for years and never really get what you want. But you, you have to be there because if you're not there, you're not going to get it for sure. So I'm more interested in doing some of these um, uh, expeditions. Sometimes I lead my own expeditions. You know, I'm quite capable of doing it myself or when I am on somebody else's expedition, basically what I want is I want them to give me access. I want them to, for instance, I, I have scheduled last, actually last October, I was supposed to be on a sexual expedition to go to Scotland and it got put off for a year. And I'm hoping that we will be able to do it in Scotland. And, and the, and the guy that I'm going to be with, he knows all the best places. So that's what I'm paying him for. I'm not paying him to teach me how to use my camera. I'm not teaching, you know, I, I, I know that pretty well. And not that I don't know it, you know, I could certainly get a tip from somebody. If somebody tells me something says, well, that's really amazing. I've never thought of that. I, I willingly accept that information, but I don't go expecting, you know, I'm going to learn about how to use my camera. I'm there because this guy gives me access. This guy shows me, you know, this is the place you need to be at four o'clock in the morning. The best when spots, the sun comes up and so forth. And, you know, at this castle and, and whatever, whatever. So that's what I do now. I've been trying to do more of that. Even some, and I sometimes with my, with my friends and some of these friends I've actually met through some of these professional workshops, I say, listen, you know, let's go to Death Valley, California. You know, I know, so I, I know that thing like the back of my hand. I'll tell you what the best places are. I'm not even going to charge you. We're just going to go and have a good time, you know, and hang out and have a few drinks and get up at four in the morning and bust our butts and, you know, go out there and get some good photography. So I love doing that. I love teaching. I, I, I feel I'm really an excellent teacher. And, and that's what I've been doing with my videos, with, you know, standing in front of a classroom and so forth. I love to impart information and I try to do it in a way that's, if I can understand it, if I break the thing down, it's in words that I really fully understand. Uh, I feel like anybody can. And, you know, even though I am a doctor, I have four California teaching credentials. I've done a lot of teaching, you know, from, from junior high level all the way up to university. And, and I love to do it. And I get excited about it. I get excited about just showing people sometimes just the simplest things can, can quote, change their life, you know, allow them to really see something that, that they never knew before. And it's the same thing with, with doing therapy. Sometimes it's just basic information that these people lack. I remember I had a client, this woman, she, she calls me up 
this is when I was teaching down at San Diego State University in San Diego. And this woman calls me up and she's in tears. And I kind of, I finally get out of her. So what, what's the, what's your issue? <clears throat> and she said, oh my God, you know, I came home the other day and my boyfriend, my fiance was at home. And, you know, I expected her to say, you know, well, he's, you know, having sex with her sister or some guy or the dog or something, something outrageous. But she calls, she tells me in tears that, that, uh, that I, I caught, I caught him masturbating. And she felt number one, that he doesn't love me anymore. That's somewhat of a common kind of, you know, belief, but she actually thought he is gay because only gay guys masturbate. That's and how, that, 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 that's, that's how rudimentary her information is. Definitely. So, so that's they came, premium. they come to, they come to therapy with just one session. And, and I gave them just the, 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 you know, I believe in this, uh, model of, of therapy and and some of it you, the, you know the, the the some of it is just very simple information and it doesn't really even require serious therapy but just to be able to explain to her that men like to masturbate women like to masturbate that believe it or not doesn't mean we're gay and it was like the, you know the, this 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 light came over her because she just, you know, she was, she got this information that that's all she needed. I mean, I don't know what happened to them. Maybe they broke up next week. I have no idea. But, but uh, as far as this issue is concerned, just that specific uh, information, that simple limited information was all she needed to quote, you know, overcome her sex problem. Definitely. Yes. I, 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 I quite understand that. Because I, I think sexual education is a huge, huge problem on yeah. the upbringing of people. So yeah. uh, it's, I, I, I relate to that, of course. Um, very well. So you're just lay low, retire. Oh, by the way, Canon or Nikon? Can't, what? Oh, Nikon. Of course. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I have been an icon guy forever. So, so you uh, have been, you have been an icon guy too, or yeah, the, the first, the first cam that I've got <clears throat> was, was a Canon and I hated it so much, so huh. much, uh, that I never bought another one. So uh -huh. ever, ever since uh, I believe middle eighties that I've been an icon, the first one was an F 801. So it was, kind of old school, but it was fun. Yeah, and yeah. Well, I, since... I go way back. My, my first Nikon camera was a, well, of course, 35 millimeter actual film camera, you yes. know, and it was a, it was a Nikon mat. I mean, this thing was, was completely, I mean, it did have a meter inside, but you had to line things up. I mean, you actually had to line up a little, a little arrow with a little thing like this. And that showed you, you had the proper exposure. That's all there was. I mean, and they it, cha it, it, it changed it, it, colors. It, it, it was light gray and dark gray. And once it got almost even, you knew that. No, it, it didn't was... even do that. It was no? just a neat, it was just a needle that oh, went like okay. this, okay. just okay. a simple little thing like that. And that, you know, it was really rudimentary, but it was a damn good camera. And, and I don't know whether I still have those lenses anymore, but one of the things I really appreciate out of Nikon is if I had one of those lenses, it would still fit on the cameras yes. I have and today. And it still work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that's, the, that's very Not good. that it, not, not that it's the best lens. I mean, that lens, and we're talking, you know, in the, in the sixties, you know, a lens they made in the sixties, you know, can't compare to a of very course. simple, cheap Nikon lens now because of all the, the ergonomics that they can put into it, you know, using electronics and everything else. But, but uh, I do love Nikon. Definitely. definitely. So there, that's a good so choice. There. That's a very good yeah. choice. Yeah. Yeah. My brother so, is Canon guy. He, he went, he went over to the dark side. Well, there's always the dark side. Um, Perry, let's wrap it up. I have one last question. I ask this question to all my guests. I'm going to ask you all the same. Go ahead. If you have to give an adjective to your penis, what would it be? If I had to give what to my penis? An adjective. Oh, an adjective. Yes. Huh. I ask everyone. Re so yeah. Um, reliable with help. How's that? 
It's a good one. It's a good one. I've been told a lot of stuff. Trust me. It's a uh -huh. good one. Uh huh. Yeah. You did. Obviously, I wasn't prepared for this question. So. No. See, that's <laughs> that's one of the, the 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 main reasons that I don't talk topics. Try me. Then. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. And and uh, I don't know whether you've got very far into my my bio, but but I've been on I've been on Larry King Live. I've been on Geraldo. Yes. I've been on I've every. Seen, I've uh, seen that radio and television program and everything and it's the same there i've been on tons of other people's shows i even had my own radio show so yeah the 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 business of of being you know the the interviewer or interviewee you know is i love them both and and i i like that concept you know and and there's certain things that like maybe somebody says okay is there something that you absolutely refuse to talk about you know this is a no-go i always ask something. that and most something people like that you know I, I, and, and, and most i people i don't re respond to that on the no-go they 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 respond to one of two things either it's family my family is off limits or uh -huh. um my personal experience so either the, 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 the that's the most common things that they say on the no-go uh, topics yeah yeah and i would probably say the same thing and and uh but but i may you know i like that in other words i'm not going to go on and on about you know all the women that i've been with or all the men that i've been with or all the animals i've been with or whatever whatever but if it happens to come up within the conversation i might volunteer it of course, but you're, you're right. I would prefer you not, you know, so to tell me the, you know, the, the most exotic animal you've ever been with or <laughs> something like that. You know? I had to jump way ahead, right? <laughs> no, the, the thing, the, the, the thing is, uh, I, I get that and it's been quite uh, common. So I, there are yes, subjects. I appreciate that. I appreciate There are that. subjects that are not open to discussion. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, I, I'm willing to bring uh, your expertise to the talk show. Uh, when I interview a cam model, I bring their sexiness. The, but when it comes to their personal life, what's behind the cam? That's mm -hmm. no one's business. It's their yeah. business. So actually. Yeah. It, it, it it's been working quite well and yeah this that's, last, that's a good good attitude yeah th th this last question has has been uh, a constant so i ask everyone this and uh -huh. the, yeah. the answers have been amazing uh -huh. they've been quite <laughs> quite good uh-huh yeah yeah and and i and i'm in a sense i i'm kind of an old hand at this if you did ask me you know something i thought was totally out of line you know like what's the most out exotic animal you've ever been with and i chose not to tell you you know i would say i choose not to tell you of course you know i, I wouldn't get flustered however some people could get upset of course they could, of they course. could get up you know you ask something like that and then i had I, I had a different experience on that and that was a good one actually uh I pushed uh, a woman to answer question, pushed, well, in a nice way, in a talkative way. Um, yeah. And she yeah, answered on, a certain, you a certain on your, on your of, show On your show? Or yes, personal? on the show, on the show. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, she answered the questions. And this is recorded, so I edited, I, I edited it up afterwards. Um, and um, she actually told me not to air those questions and those answers and i mm -hmm. totally respect that. that yeah of course yeah. that's the only yeah. way to 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 act upon otherwise sure uh, this is otherwise going to hell in the end basket in less than no time yeah you could get a reputation of somebody you know who's trying to ambush people or something like that oh, pretty soon that's not the point to come on that's not know? the point not at all yeah yeah Barry, last okay. thing open mic yeah. do whatever you want say whatever you want leave your message it's it's yours uh i encourage people to go out and have an adventurous fulfilling sex life you know take a chance do something that's a little bit different uh, if you're with a partner you know try to you know have the balls or the vagina to to uh you know do something that's a little bit maybe a, out of your your realm of, of comfort and and just and just have fun because sex is fun sex is is uh the major thing one of the things that i like to stress in my company is uh, your pleasure is my business. You know, your pleasure is paramount. So anything I can do to make a person's life more pleasurable, 
with my videos, with my DVDs, with my teaching, with my doing guest appearances, whatever. That's my message. I want people to be able to feel like, well, this is a sex positive guy and he gave me the, the permission to, to get out there and, and, and make sex fun. Thanks, Perry. It has been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being over and to have such a very nice conversation and quite pleasant and enlightening. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And and I you know and I encourage you if you suddenly you know think of something else that that you know you'd love to have me expound upon because I've done expounding upon all kinds of things sexual. You know, give me a ring and and let me know if if you want me to come on again. Okay, sure, of course, yeah, of course, I will. Um, yeah. if, if you want, you can go on Smartify. It's a social network and you, you're going to relate quite well to it because in terms of looks, uh, it's going to feel like Facebook, for instance. There's, uh, you, you have a profile, you can manage groups, you can invite people in, you can engage and react and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. if you want to, not as a, 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 as a professional thing, but as a fun thing, if you want to be in and lead a community of sex therapy and Q&A and, &A and uh, engage and bring people in, build your group, mm -hmm. Please mm -hmm. do yeah. be my guest. Okay. I'll help you, you out Thank any you. way that I can because this Smartify was created for people to 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 have a decent adult conversation. Um, That's nice. Yeah. Uh, without without the noise of Twitter or the, the the mods in in Reddit or the censorship on Facebook and Instagram. So you can actually do whatever you do in a completely not safe for work environment mm -hmm. and engage and talk to people so if you want to come in and if you want to bring in people that you think um relate that would be amazing okay good and one thing i people always tell me i'm always terrible about promoting myself but if you are interested in my videos and i'm i'm like i say i'm, I'm not even particularly interested in promoting them to because i have to sell them but if somebody is interested they can go on sexual intimacy Dot com. Maybe you can even, you know, use that as a link. Oh, definitely. You can whatever. promote that, that and, uh, there. And or, uh, yeah, or you do it, you know, however yes. else you have your thing set up, maybe the way you're setting up my little interview or something like that to learn more about. Oh, Dr. there's going to be a link there for that. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Excellent. And the, on, on Smartify, there's also a marketplace like Amazon. Think about oh, it like Amazon. Okay. Uh -huh. And you can actually list your videos there and sell them. You, you can. Oh, okay. So it's 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 adult just All go right. there have a look sure, if have you have look. some yeah. problem or if you don't understand something just let me know i'll help you okay out. excellent okay thanks so much it's been my pleasure i hope it's been yours too